By the gods! The unknown alien was ugly. Small, four-limbed, and almost unbearably pink to Sal's eyes. He had even removed his glare goggles just to make sure it wasn't a trick of the light in the docking terminal. Nope, clearly pink. He kept a nice stalk on it while it ungainly climbed the boarding ramp, clearly meant for bigger beings than it. A travel bag carried under one limb. Maybe it had freshly shed its shell. That would explain the wrinkles and the coloration, but no. If it had just shed, then it should be hiding away safely in the den while its new shell hardened. Maybe juvenile of some sort. That would explain its small stature. Perhaps its proper colorings had not developed yet. Ah, oh, well. It was paying full fare like the other passengers, so whatever. Sal turned back to his manifest slate and continued his secondary check of the onboarding cargo. Having a few passengers was good money for these short backwater routes. Kept his small business just above the profitable line, too. Still, his mind kept wandering back to the unknown alien. He had met many species from all over the known universe in all his long years on the job, but none so small and fragile looking as the pink one. Absently, he made a note to check on it in his quarters once they were away. Nathan dropped his duffel bag into the luggage container at the foot of his bed with a huge sigh. He thought about unpacking, but it would only be two nights aboard this antiquated haulish freighter before he reached his next destination. He was tired of people staring, tired of not being the right height for any amnities, tired of the galaxy at large. He wasn't a small man, not even close. At six foot eight and 120 kilos of retired professional football player, he had thought he was big enough to handle whatever was thrown his way, but he wasn't ready for all the little comments wearing him down. Even now, the other passengers and crew aboard this ship would be gossiping about him, keen to ask all the usual questions. Everyone wanted to know what he was, where he was from, and what he was doing here. Some of the aliens sometimes got super weird, like asking him if he was a new hatch, where his broodmother was, or if his owner knew he was here. A side effect of seeming so small to the other species, he guessed. Nathan climbed onto the bed that was at least ten times too large for him, and probably began to snore lightly. It was just after midnight by Earth standards, after all. Sal was just about to relax onto the captain's perch, when he received a request for assistance from a crewmate on his communicator. Irritated, he waved the pilot to continue traversing to the jump point while he went back to the guest quarters. Something about a guest being unhappy with his quarters? It happened from time to time. Sal knew his ship was amongst the older ones that were still spaceworthy, and it sometimes reflected badly in the mediocre amenities available for passengers and crew, but it was all well maintained. As he got closer to the passenger compartment, Sal increased his pace towards the distant sound of high-pitched yelling. His temper flared, knowing that his poor steward would be on the receiving end of it. Rounding the final corner of the passageway, it became clear that it was much, much worse. An angry zillion was screeching at the top of his lungs about something unintelligible while waving a pulse pistol in the air wildly. Several other passengers and crew were all sitting, lying or crouching against one wall with all their manipulators above their heads, cringing away from the zillion. Just as Sal opened his mouth to de-escalate the situation, something unexpected happened. A door further down the corridor opened and the little pink one emerged from his quarters. Inwardly he cringed. Things were bad enough without some little juvenile alien bumbling into this mess and getting underfoot. His brewbuffer would be furious if something happened to it on his watch. To make matters worse, the pink one almost immediately began to approach the still screeching zillion, who had turned to face Sal and had yet to notice the little alien now approaching from behind. Maybe he could tackle the hysteric zillion before he could bring the pistol to bear on anyone, but one glance at his natural hooked claws made him think twice about getting into a close quarters brawl with it. What Sal needed was a miracle, or perhaps several crew in full anti-pirate gear, but in his heart he knew he was going to have to deal with this himself. Nathan was less than pleased to be woken up, even more so to the shrill sounds of high-pitched yelling in the corridor. Grumpily, he slid the short distance to the floor of his room and went to see what all the fuss was about. To his surprise, instead of passengers fighting over who would get to talk to him first like he half expected, 
There was some sort of blue shelled alien waving what was clearly a weapon of some variety at a mixed assortment of aliens. Fortunately, the blue shell had its back to him. Unfortunately, the high-pitched noise it was making was getting faster. A sure sign that things were about to go south and waiting for the ship's security to arrive was not really an option. In a sudden rush of anger, Nathan realised he didn't want to wait for security anyway. He was tired of being talked down to by almost everyone in the galaxy as a million little insults and snubs in his travels came to the fore. Balling his fists, he charged at the blue shell from behind. Besides, if it was waving a gut around, then it wasn't like anyone would care if he vented his anger on it a bit. Sal was sealing himself to tackle the zillion when the pink one collided with a much larger alien. It lashed out with impossible speed, with one of his upper manipulators straight into one of the zillion's leg joints with an alarming crunch. The screeching pitch grew higher, and the armed passenger collapsed to his remaining two knees. Everyone else was silent, looking on in pure shock at this turn of events. Surprised at the effectiveness and swiftness of the attack, Sal was too stunned to die for the pulse pistol, but the pink one wasn't finished. Lashing out with his remaining upper manipulator, it collided with the zillion's head, right between his second and third eye. It went down, like a toppling stack of cargo containers, out cold. The sound of the zillion's head bouncing off the decking made Sal flinch. Nothing should be able to take down a grown zillion so effortlessly. Its overlapping armoured shell, hooked claws and pulse pistol, all rendered ineffective with two strikes. There was a moment of perfect silence, then, before anyone could say anything, the pink one reached out and took the pistol out of an unconscious grip, placed it on the floor, and then stomped on it, crushing the gun's housing and befouling the barrel beyond use. With a quick glare at everyone, it turned around and stomped off back to his room, closing the door behind it. Sal let out the breath he didn't realise he was holding, and began to call in crew to help him sort out this mess he was left with. Several hours later, once the crime passengers had been consoled and sent to medical, and the unconscious Zillion taken to the ship's brig, needing no fewer than four crew to lift it, Sal sat down and thought about the day's events and the report he was going to have to write up for the authorities. It wasn't handing over the crazy Zillion Sal was worried about. It was the pink one and his actions. Such speed and power in a juvenile. No one would believe his story given how small the pink one was. The mature specimens of the species must be terrifying. Alerts would have to be sent out to the diplomatic corps of every species in the known galaxy to avoid conflicts with these creatures. Maybe carefully find out just how prolific and widely spread the species is. But worse, to probably fill the report he would have to know the pink one's name, species, etc. And it was very clear the pink one did not like to be disturbed.